Hello. My name's Toby Thompson. I'm here today with Ingvar Mikkelsen. Uh, Ingvar's a DBA student here at Cranfield. Ingvar, you're looking at decision-making processes and the factors and the context that affect that for big pharma and for clinicians in, inside pharmaceuticals. Tell us more about that, that, uh, that topic. It, I, I feel this is very interesting and it's a very important topic to, uh, to study further. And, and the reason for that is that all factors and contexts that impact a physician decision, uh, and for my company, what, what's of interest is uh, prescription of prescription-only medicines, uh, is because all these decisions will ultimately have an impact on health. And uh, both on an individual level, but but also on uh, on a more social level. So you're trying to find out the behaviours of clinicians choosing the products that you've got. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what factors in which context actually affect prescription behaviour, uh, and to what degree. And doing this, we can better design uh, ways of communicating important information to clinicians and hopefully having an outcome, uh, an effect on health outcomes. It seems to affect us all uh, involved with, uh, with physicians. Um, tell us more about the process of the DBA then. That came to you as something that could be applied to a DBA study, clearly, and Cranfield uh, mm -hmm. said yes, we like the sound of that, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. M my thinking during the past five to six years has been wondering why pharmaceutical industry, which, which I'm part of, is spending a huge amount on uh, marketing, especially directed uh, at physicians, without really knowing what factors uh, affect their behavior. And, and marketing is about changing uh, the behavior of, of someone. And so I thought this was really interesting has been pondering this question for five, six years um, and been thinking of doing a doctorate and I've investigated several options for doing that and came across Cranfield uh, and I looked at the process for ap uh, applying to Cranfield and it was very thorough and uh, uh, it was very interesting process as well and going through uh, the process with the uh, uh, writing up a study proposal, the interview process, the testing, etc. It gives you a very good indication of what, what's to come next. And it also gives you a very good indication of what support you can expect uh, in, uh, in the coming years of your study. So why a doctoral process? I can't believe that pharmaceuticals aren't looking at this sort of thing anyway. Why would a doctoral procedure going through that mill, as it were, help your thinking and the company's mm. thinking on this? Because as Today, there exists no evidence to show whether regular or, or what regulatory uh, interventions, uh, what effects they have on uh, on health outcomes, and the same thing with pharmaceutical marketing. So I think it's important to understand this, especially with the advent of new communication channels, the internet, social media, etc., where where different parties will engage and uh, ultimately affect health outcomes. So you found like a, a completely new niche by the sound of it. Tell us about the process uh, on the DBA itself of your peers. How are they supporting you or challenging you mm -hmm. uh, in refining those questions? Uh, d during our uh, cohort meets uh, we, we, we have discussions uh, and uh, the cohort is extremely uh, diverse both geographically and experience-wise so you get a very good uh, challenge on, on your thinking and also on your academic level. So, so, I, so I definitely get the intellectual challenge that I was looking for, both from the program but also from the peers. So not just from the faculty and professors, but from them people asking well, the dumb questions. Well, why are you looking at that and I never thought about that? They're highly intelligent people and see things from a different perspective and can challenge you on that and, and there's real value in that diversity. Tell us then about the, the panel process. Uh, DBA uh, is fairly rigorous, and one at Cranfield we have a multi-member cohort, uh, mm. sorry, multi-member panel. Tell us about that process and how you see that working for you. The, the, the process isn't as frightening as most people uh, w are you know, wanting it to be or th think that it is. Uh, it's quite a pleasant discussion, actually, around your research topic uh, where you get critique uh, but the critique is constructive, so, so it gives you an opportunity to better yourself and better your, uh, y your studies and your research and become a better researcher uh, in the end. Coupled with that, I think what is really good about the Cranfield program is that 
it's not just about contributing to knowledge, but it's also the practical aspect of it. And, and, and that really uh, uh, kind of feeds my heart because I, I want something to come out of this for me. That's not just a contribution to knowledge, but I want it to be put into action so, so that we actually can know a little bit more about what affects the decisions and possibly then also health outcomes for people. So as a physician, that's important for me. So Cranfield's helping you be a better researcher, but you don't see yourself as a researcher at the end of this process. You see yourself as a pragmatic, uh, somebody with, with opinion uh, that people will come to for, for that opinion. Yeah, and, and the tools uh, to investigate and put these uh, uh, things into practice. So uh, in five years' time, could you see where you are? No, I, I was talking to one of our global leaders uh, the other day, and they're very interested in the work uh, that I'm doing uh, because the behavioral side uh, of uh, position decision behavior is, is important going forward to understand uh, what context and factors that actually uh, ultimately affect the decision to write this drug or that drug. Uh, and that has, again, an uh, effect on health outcomes. And it's important both from a payer, regulatory, patient, industry, physician point of view. So it's, it's, it's multifaceted and very important question. We all have a vested interest. Ingvar Mikkelsen, thank you very much indeed for your time today.